most sought after skills and qualifications for AI professionals today? And how do these needs vary across different industries? Yeah, so we are seeing varying across different industries. The main things that haven't changed would be soft skills. We're still looking for strong problem solving skills, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, things that we're seeing pretty much on every job description at the moment. Um, but some of the technical skills surprisingly are not that different to what we've been seeing for the last five to 10 years. Uh, programming languages, for example, we're still using a lot of Python, a lot of R, a lot of Java, and C++. The next skill we see in a lot of is like machine learning algorithms, whether that be supervised, unsupervised or reinforcement learning. There's a lot of emphasis on deep learning as well. Neural networks, for example, TensorFlow, PyTorch, these are going to be things that will be coming with Elon Musk's Neuralink, um, if you hear anything about that. And then data science, I mean, this one's been around for a long time, but it's still going to be really key moving forward. People who can clean, analyze and visualize the data. There's a lot of mathematics and statistics that goes along with this as well, which you know cuts me completely out the process. But if you are better at math than me and you know how to do linear algebra, calculus and probability, then you have a lot of good skills for the for AI. Natural language processing or NLP as we see it, a lot written down, that's text analysis. So computer vision, image recognition, object detection, things that we're beginning now to see at stadiums and airports ports and things like that so when you get to the gate and you no longer have to hand over your passport because they've got an image of you and they know your name and what seat number you know that's the kind of thing some of these do change for industries so we're seeing some variances there healthcare there's a big need for medical imaging and genomics finance risk assessment and fraud detection you know all good things for the consumer with their bank accounts looking for more protection for their money and people trying to scam them out of it and then manufacturing, a lot of people may have seen right now that, you know, these big manufacturing facilities are moving more towards robotics and having them build the products themselves. We've seen that a lot with Tesla now having completely built their cars with robots themselves. So we need people to be able to maintain them. So predictive maintenance and then robotics and retail, actually, they're now looking into recommended systems and personalization. That one kind of was a surprise to me as we are tending to move more away from the brick and mortar stores, but we're also seeing a bit more of that as well. Which industries are seeing the most growth in AI adoption and what types of AI roles are they looking to fill? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are some industries adopting this a lot faster than others. Healthcare being one of them, no surprises there. We are a long way off from having robot doctors and I don't think that would necessarily would ever be the plan, but um, we do need AI specialists and machine learning engineers. As we've seen, there are some now procedures that are being done with more AI and machine learning, things like that. So we need the, the specialists to come in and basically advise on what AI could be brought into the medical hospital and kind of how it would be beneficial and then the machine learning engineers obviously to help run those. Finance, we did touch upon this in the previous question, but now we're seeing a demand for financial AI analysis, um, AI ethicists as well to make sure that the, the AI is being run and used for the right reasons and then quantitative analysis. I know I touched upon this in the last one too, but manufacturing, so those AI robot engineers and machine learning engineers and then retail, data scientists and AI strategists are really really big um, you know people that can recommend different AI models and their yeah, recommendation system engineers as well we've seen some of these stores pop up now where they're completely you know humanless and so that's where I think these are coming in the biggest interplay and then obviously at the self checkouts as well um, I don't know I was in a big grocery a national grocery store yesterday and I kept getting flagged because I had two products in my hand and I was going to scan one and then but, but with the intention of scanning the next one next but it this came up with this big video of me and like and then it flashed up and it came got the, the, the guy to come and help me to prove that I wasn't stealing it it could count exactly how many items I had in my in my car and then how many I scanned through at the end it was pretty wild so yeah we're seeing some advancements there and then an industry that's probably no surprise to anyone would be technology again AI researchers AI architects the people that can build these amazing platforms and then the software engineers themselves who can kind of develop them and keep them running as well.
What are the biggest challenges companies face when hiring AI talent? And what strategies can they use to overcome these challenges? Yeah, there are a few key challenges at the moment. The number one being the scarcity of skilled professionals out there who are qualified to do these roles. Um, so we need to look beyond our traditional hiring means. You know, we need to look beyond just reading a resume and seeing if they've done the job before. Like, let's really take them apart. Like, have they got the skills? Have they done something similar in another area? Could this be transferable skill? Could this be developed in a, in a way? Um, and then also get closer with the universities let's get close with the grads coming into the field let's offer them internships you know let's get them out there while they're young and track them as they're coming into the workforce and there's a lot of conferences and online communities as well but then another thing is upskill existing employees you know see people that are interested in AI and if they want to develop further and kind of invest in them because you've already got them within the organization they're already there they're already loyal um, and you know they're already work doing a good job so why not help them help Help you as well and grow in that way too. The second challenge I see is really high salary expectations because these people are so high in demand. You know, they're getting hit up all the time. They're getting hit up by big names, like you know, some of the startups. They're getting kind of all kinds of offers. So make sure that you're offering competitive salaries. You know, do your market research, see what your competitors are offering, and make sure that you're able to compete with that. But then also emphasize your benefits that might be additional or alongside to this you know people would want they want flexible work particularly in these kind of roles where they're working long hours um, and often that these roles become their projects become like home projects too because they're so invested and they're enjoying what they're doing so much so give them that flexibility and you're probably going to get a little bit more work out of them and then let's develop them professionally as well you know offer them professional development tell them how they can develop their career within your organization um, and make sure that you have a positive company culture because once you have them there you know you want to keep them there for as long as possible and one way to lose them really quickly is a negative work culture or leading them to feel overworked and kind of underappreciated and then the third challenge I see is really attracting the talent to your organization um, so if you are kind of new into AI show your company's commitment to AI tell them about exciting projects that you have that are either ongoing upcoming you know get them excited show them your cutting edge technology all the technology that you want to invest in and then yeah make sure that they have growth opportunities and those are clearly communicated to them as they join the organization you know so they know where they can go um, because a lot of people are looking for a long-term home and they're not looking to move around in the next couple of years so give them that opportunity to understand that that your organization can offer that for them